Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over how you can identify the type of particles that are in your substance as well as the type of attractions that you have between those particles. So let's get into this. So the first thing you need to do is identify whether you've got an ionic compound, a molecular compound, or a metallic compound. Those are the three kinds of compounds you have. And then we go from there to identify whether you've got a dipole-dipole interaction or if you've got electrostatic ionic interaction between, say, ions, or if you have a hydrogen bond or, uh, or if you've got van der Waals or London dispersion forces uh, occurring between your particles. So let's go, let's get into this. So first we have C8H18, that is octane. So here we've only got carbons and hydrogen. So it's two uh, non-metals that are bonded together. And so here we have uh, a molecule. So this is a very large molecule. Um, and so remember molecules is the term that we give to particles that are made up of only non-metals, right? So if you've got uh, something like this, and this is a molecule, it's a large molecule, but it's a molecule nonetheless. Now here, uh, the next thing you got to figure out is if there's polarity in the bonds. And here, the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is going to be very small. So hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.20 and carbon, if I remind myself, carbon has an electronegativity difference of 2.55. So then that would be a difference of 0 0.38, which means that it would be a nonpolar bond. So this has nonpolar bonds. So this is going to be a nonpolar molecule. Therefore, the attraction is going to be uh, is going to be uh, London dispersion forces or LDF. So if I write that down here, so this is going to, these are going to be molecules, and so and then the attractions are going to be L LDF London dispersion forces. Okay, so next we have aluminum. Aluminum we want to recognize as a metal. So this is just a bunch of metal atoms together, right? And so what would be the particles involved in this material here? Well, since it's only a metal, then we have a metallic substance, and therefore we're going to have uh, the sea of electrons model here. So what does that mean? It means that we're going to have the particles are going to be your positive uh, aluminum cations, right, that are in a sea of negative electrons flowing uh, amongst the different uh, aluminum, positive aluminum uh, nuclei or, or atoms, the positive uh, cations. So here we have, uh, this is going to be metallic Okay, we have, we have metallic. And so um, we're going to have, let me write the particles down. So we're going to have uh, aluminum cations in C of electrons. And so what is the uh, force holding them together? We call that metallic bond. So that's the um, attractive force. The C of electrons is like the glue holding all of the positive cations together. All right, next we have bromine, Br2. So Br2, that's two bromines bonded together. Bromine is a non-metal. So here we have two non-metal atoms bonded together. That's going to be a molecule. So here we have a molecule. And what is the attractive force? Well, here we have to recognize that since the two atoms are the same, uh, there's no polarity in the bond because uh, the electronegativities of the two atoms is identical 
And so the polarity or the difference in electronegativity is zero. And so their pure polarity in the bond is zero. So the attractive force in this case is again, London dispersion forces. So LDF. Okay, so for D we have lithium bromide. So here we recognize lithium as a metal. Bromine again is a non-metal. So we have a metal and a non-metal together. So this is gonna be an ionic substance. So what are the particles? The positive ion and the negative ion, the cation and anion. So the particles are gonna be the, uh, the ions, cation and anion. And so the, the uh, force here, the attractive force holding them together is going to be your ionic bond, right? That's your electrostatic force holding them together between the ions, the electrostatic force between the ions. So ionic bond or ion-ion interaction. <clears throat> All right, so ethanol. What is ethanol? Well, if we write the formula for ethanol, so let's go ahead and write that. So ethanol is CH3C. Uh, it's going to be CH, uh, CH2OH. So that is the formula for <clears throat> ethanol. And you can see there's a lot of carbon and hydrogen in here, but you got this OH bond, which is typical of an alcohol. So alcohols end in OL. So anytime you see something like this ending in OL, it's probably going to be an alcohol with an OH. Now that OH is not a hydroxide ion. Don't confuse that with hydroxide ion uh, because this is not a, a positive ion. So the CH3, CH2, that's not going to be an ion. So if you see the OH there, that's going to be the, your hydroxide, I'm sorry, your um, um, hydroxyl group is what it's called. And so that's for uh, uh, ethanol or alcohols in general. So now you notice that here, because we have O and H, H is bonded to the O. So that tells us something about what type of interactions we're going to have. But we'll get to that in a moment. So here we have a molecule because everything is non uh, nonmetals. So we have molecules is the particle. So we have molecules. And now we have to decide, is it polar, nonpolar, what kind of interactions? And so here we'll see the OH here. And so because of the OH, we have a hydrogen bonded of oxygen. Anytime you have a hydrogen bonded to either oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, then you've got hydrogen bonding as the predominant attractive force. Dipole-dipole uh, is also here. So it has dipole-dipole, um, but that's not the predominant force. It has a special dipole-dipole called the hydrogen bond. And so we'll uh, use that. So hydrogen bonding is the predominant force, even though uh, it does have dipole-dipole. So, so I'll write down dipole-dipole, dipole-dipole. So there are dipole-dipole interactions, but hydrogen bonding or H bonding is the predominant one. So that, I'll circle that one. Okay, now for F, we have CH3 and H2. Again, here we have nothing but nonmetals. So this is a molecule. And once again, we have uh, nitrogen here. Two hydrogens are bonded to the nitrogen. So that indicates that we're going to have uh, polarity in the bonds. Right, just like we have here, hyd oxygen, hydrogen, um, there's polarity here. So that's where we get the dipole dipole interaction. So we're going to have polarity here. So dipole dipole is also going to be an interaction. However, because we have the hydrogens bonded to the nitrogen, then this allows us to have H bonding or hydrogen bonding as the predominant attractive force between the particles. So we'll write H bonding 
and we'll circle those or that one. So the hydrogen bonding is the predominant attractive force between the molecules, but of course we can't ignore the fact that we have dipole dipole there as well. Okay, moving on to G, iron. Iron is a metal, so just like aluminum, uh, we're going to have, in this case, iron cations. So we're going to have iron cations in a sea of electrons. Sea of sea of electrons so those are particles so therefore we're going to have again the the attractive force is metallic bonds okay iodine what's the formula for iodine that's an element again that's going to be i2 for the formula so just like bromine here Bromine has two bromine atoms bonded together. Iodine has two iodine atoms together. So the electronegativity difference between the iodine atoms is uh, zero because it's the same electronegativity for both. And so this is going to be a nonpolar bond. Uh, but of course, we have molecule here. So this is going to be a molecule. So we got molecules for the particle. And so again, this is going to be a nonpolar bond. So the attractive force is LDF, London dispersion forces. For I, we have CH3OH. So you recognize the OH, that's an alcohol group. So this is an alcohol, and this is a uh, nonpolar. I'm uh, sorry, this is a uh, non-metal, so all of this is non-metal, so this is a molecule. All these are bonded together in a molecule. And so, again, because we have hydrogen bond to oxygen, uh, the oxygen in our molecule allows us to be a non-polar, I'm sorry, allows us to be a polar molecule. So we're going to have dipole-dipole interactions. So dipole dipole is going to be there as well as hydrogen bonding so we'll put h bonding so maybe i'll uh yeah i'll move that maybe right here so we'll have uh, H bonding. H bonding. And I'll circle H bonding since the hydrogen bonding is going to be the more predominant attractive force uh, in for between the molecules. NH3, ammonia. So again, we have non-metals. So therefore, this is going to be uh, molecule, so molecule. And again, we have a hydrogen bonded to nitrogen. This is the this is going to be polar bonding here. So we've got dipole dipole. And once again, uh, because we have hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, there's going to be hydrogen bonding. And again, I'll circle the hydrogen bonding or H bonding uh, to indicate that that is the predominant attractive force between the ammonia molecules. And so finally, uh, we got K, we have hydrogen chloride, that's HCl. So two nonmetals. This would be more like hydrogen chloride gas. It's not. Uh, it's not um, in solution. So we're we're not treating this as an acid where it's going to break apart into ions. It's, so it's just a molecule in this form. If we think of HCl gas. Um, so here we would have um, 
molecules. And because we have hydrogen and chlorine, that's going to be a large electronegativity difference. Chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So we're going to get polarity in the bond. And so here we would expect to have dipole-dipole interactions. Dipole-dipole. Because of the polarity in the, the bond itself. Chlorine, you only have two atoms, chlorine and hydrogen. So the hydrogen is going to be less electronegative. So the chlorine is going to be partial negative and the uh, hydrogen to be partial positive. All right, next we have KF. K, potassium is a metal. F, fluorine is a nonmetal. We have a metal and a nonmetal. So this is going to be two ions. So the particles here is the cation, the potassium, plus the anion, the fluoride ion, anion. And so therefore, the attractive force is going to be the ionic bond, the electrostatic attractive force between the oppositely charged ions. So that we call that an ionic bond. And finally, we got carbon, carbon in the form of diamond. So carbon, everything in diamond is just carbon bonded together in what is known as a uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, a covalent network, right? So you got this uh, like four carbons. You got each carbon bonded to four other carbons. And so it makes a kind of a network or a mesh of carbons bonded together. This, why is, uh, this is why diamond is so hard, so strong. Um, so if you've got just carbon, that's going to be nonpolar. Right, because carbons bonded to carbons, the electronegativity difference is zero because they have this same electronegativity. So here, the particles are going to be uh, what we call, uh, I guess it would be a molecule. Okay, so we've got molecules. Well, not necessarily, I wouldn't say molecules, I take that back. We don't really have molecules here. It's just like we got like one substance where all the carbon atoms are bonded together in a kind of a matrix, if you will, or mesh. So I'm not sure I would refer to this as carbon molecules, um, but it definitely is carbon atoms. So I'll, I'll say carbon atoms for lack of a better thing but it is just not even separate atoms either it's just carbon atoms bonded together and so here we would have covalent covalent bonds so we've got covalent bonds here that where the carbon atoms are all bonded to each other um, and so uh, it would be uh, I guess uh, we'll call this a covalent Oops, covalent network. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word, I wouldn't say molecules. Um, uh, covalent network is probably the best where we have the carbon atoms all bonded to each other. And so uh, covalent bonds is the attractive force between, between them. And they're all non-polar covalent bonds. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you uh, identify the types of particles and the types of attractions between the particles. And so I hope this was helpful. I hope it was interesting. And if it was, and please, by all means, like the video, share the video, hit that like button over there, and then uh, also subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And when you do, make sure you click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question or a problem you want me to go over for you, or if you have a topic you want me to cover, I would love to do that for you. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day.